Hey there. So I am throwing together a deadlift jack for my home gym setup. And I wanted to go through because I think I'm going to end up doing a little bit of a different style than what I've seen out there in the internet world as far as in web searches uh, with photos that I've seen or YouTube videos. And so I thought uh, since the approach that I'm going to be taking is slightly different and using a little bit of different material setup than I've seen out there that I might be able to have a design that would work better for some folks uh, as it is for myself. So what I'm working with here is a little bit more standard fare as far as lumber goes that people might have uh, in their collection already, uh, scrap even. Uh, so these are uh, two by sixes and two by fours. For those that aren't aware, two by sixes and two by fours are not two inches by six inches and two inches by four inches. They're slightly less than that. So a two by six is actually five and a half by one and a half. Uh, same thing with a two by four. So a two by four is one and a half by uh, three and a half. So in planning my design, I wanted one that had an upright handle. I've seen a couple versions of this that have the handle coming out horizontally, which to me equates basically having to bend down to the bars level to jack the barbell up off of the ground, which uh, to my preference is not ideal. My back flares up pretty easily with a lot of unnecessary bending over or kneeling down. And so I would like the device to work from standing. So my handle will be coming up. So I've already done a little bit of the measuring and I will walk you through a little bit of the design features and how I plan to put this together with minimal work, uh, but also a high degree of stability and functionality. So in working with a two by six, I did have some concern for the amount of surface that was gonna be in contact with the floor. I have seen versions of this that utilized a two by four and it looked like it worked fine. But when you're getting up into the higher weight ranges, uh, say above 300 pounds or so, I didn't know how stable that would be. And so I wanted to try to maximize that using the standard sizes of lumber. And I also wanted to use standard size lumber. So two by tens and two by twelves, that would have involved me going to Home Depot and that's not something I wanted to do. I'm basically whipping this thing out for free as I speak. So what I came up with was what you see here. The standard way to measure this was to take whatever size plate you have, so there's a plate, and lay it against the board that's gonna be your main weight bearer. And then do your best to center it over the board and then take your measurement with a couple inches uh, protruding on what will become the floor side of your jack. And that ensures that the barbell when lifted will be up off the ground several inches, allowing you free ease to load and unload plates. So there's that. So in doing that, I actually got pretty lucky and my hole was darn near center. I'm going to redo that and make sure that it is actually centered when I do my cuts but took some measurements off of that so uh, with the square at the top and the bottom of that and then gave myself about an inch of additional surface here to cut through uh, just because that's a design that I saw in a few of the versions that, uh, that are out there and I wanted to make sure that I stuck with what works from those designs and so it seemed to be adding a little bit of a lip before you're actually into your weight bearing side of your cut here was what seemed to work for them so that's going to be the weight bearing side of the 
jack. And then the handles will be secured with just standard wood screws. And initially I had wondered, just thinking about this design, whether or not I could keep it the same, the entire unit the same width as the two by six. But as you see, there's your measurement there. I've got a significant amount of cutting I would have to do into the two by four as well, which is not ideal. So that got me thinking, well, why not just offset the two by four to some degree and reduce the amount of cut? And then it occurred to me in thinking about that, well, why don't I just offset it completely on the front and the back, the handle will be the, so the longer two by four will be the uh, one at the, uh, at the back side of the jack. But if you offset the two by four completely and make sure to use enough fasteners, then you end up actually extending, if you can see over on this side, your front to back distance several inches on either side and so you'll probably end up with closer to uh, 10 to 12 inches of floor contact surface which is really what you want I think in terms of stability so I think that's the way I'm gonna go uh, design wise that's gonna reduce the amount of cutting I have to do into my 2 by 4s I'll have two sections of 2 by 4 one short in the front and then one longer one in the back that'll come up to about waist height and I think that those together, I may throw in a cross piece in the center just to give me more area to uh, attach some more fasteners. It'll just be a little piece of, maybe one or two pieces of two by four there, maybe three to four inches long. But I think that'll make for a nice sturdy piece that the end pieces will actually serve as the, the continuous piece of wood that allows the uh, fasteners to create uh, a nice tight unit here. So we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't turn out, um, then you'll know one way not to do it at least, but I'll keep uh, filming as we go along and you'll see a little bit of how this comes together if the way I'm talking about it doesn't make sense. So to wrap that up, the total pieces that you'll need or the the final number of pieces of wood that you will be you'll require to do this design will be probably a three to four foot long piece of two by four probably three foot maximum of two by six and then another looks like uh, 18 inches or so of a two by four and then a number of uh, screws to tie it all together. So not much wood at all that goes into this. All right, so all of the measurements are taken. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut the two weight bearing end pieces. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the first one uh, and then make the second one uh, cut also and then once I have them both, I'll go ahead and uh, cut the um, the round hole, the, the round cuts that we need to be made uh, once I've got both uh, blanks cut out. So the nice thing about doing it this way is when you have two mirroring pieces like this, you can do all your measuring, uh, draw your lines, prep all your cuts on the first one, and then after you've done your cuts on the first one, just use your piece that you just made uh, as a stencil onto your next one and you don't have to go through all the measuring and stuff and it goes by really quick. So we're going to go ahead and finish this out. Just a little woodworking tip. Uh, if you don't intend to actually cut on a line, but you need it as a reference point, you can always just draw a little X over it so that you don't cut on that one. Just a little visual reminder. So we're going to be cutting on these two internal surfaces here. Show you there. We'll be cutting on this line. 
not this one, just so that we have a little bit of a lip and in going into the, the actual weight bearing circle, circular part. the first part of the template uh, sort of roughly done I think I'm using a bit of a thicker or wider blade than what you should use for this but we're able to get the job done nonetheless and so we'll go ahead and take this piece and use it to stencil over what goes on the other side so just like so help if I stuck it on the camera so here's the other side these will be lined up like so with a couple of two by fours in between them here shortly but uh, we're gonna we want the same uh, shape opening in the other side so we'll go ahead and stencil this guy on here We don't have to measure again. There we go, it's a little rough, but the idea clean that up in the bed with a bit of sandpaper. All right, so I had to throw some tunes on. That dog is really getting on my nerves. So the next step here is to uh, just get a uh, same length piece of two by four as the two by six portion. So. Next, we need to figure out what length we want the handlebar to be. I'd like it to be where it's almost like uh, up to uh, maybe my uh, bottom of my chest, just to uh, make it super simple uh, and give you more leverage. So we'll figure out how long that is. It's just pretty simple measurement all the way down to the floor. got a piece right here that's almost exactly that length so I'm just going to uh, cut it flush and we'll cut a handle into it uh, once we're uh, almost done here but I'll go ahead and finish these two yeah. off. just a couple of fasteners into uh, one side. I'm going to pilot all these so we don't have any splitting. So we'll be nice and sturdy. And then we'll put it all together and do the finishing touch. It's pretty simple. Alright, so I've got the first side uh, sort of pre-fastened on there and then we'll work on the, uh, the actual handlebar side. Four per side, so I'll do one, roughly two, three, and four. Same thing on the other side. So we have a prototype set up ready to roll and I 
I have it together enough to be able to throw some weights on there and see how it takes it. And so uh, we'll go ahead and look at that now. So there it is. Uh, it's about a foot wide or so. I'm going to do a uh, kind of a cocked forward handle with the jigsaw when I get to uh, touching it up. But I want to go ahead and put some weight on and see how it takes it. All right, so here's my brand new guitar. Just kidding. This is the finished product. Uh, made a couple of final touches before I go to sanding, and that was I cut a 45 out of the bottom corner on the front so when you hook it under the bar that part that would contact the floor took a 45 out there I'll kind of smooth that out and actually the whole thing and then uh, I wanted a handle that fit in one hand uh, just to make it I don't know feel better ergonomically and I'm gonna wrap it with kind of I'm gonna wrap it with that tape that they put like on baseball hand baseball bat handles and stuff and it's I think it's gonna be real nice I'm gonna sand that nice and circular and it'll be a nice grip and uh, other than that, that's it. Uh, this is the deadlift jack with uh, 2x4s and 2x6s. Uh, works uh, pretty well, at least for this lighter stuff. Uh, won't get a chance to test it until later this week, but uh, that is the finished product. Let's see the in action again. Looks good.